HTML is the language of the web. It's used to define the content and structure of websites. If you're a no-code, low-code developer, you might be thinking that you don't really need to know HTML to build your no-code, low-code solutions. But there's lots of benefits to knowing some of the basics of HTML. So in this first video of my development fundamental series, I'm gonna break down what HTML is and give you a fundamental knowledge of some of the key points of it and show how you can use it in your no-code, low-code solutions. I'll break it all down right after this. If we're a no-code, low-code developer and using low-code solutions like say Power Apps that I talk a lot about to build mobile applications, why would we really care about HTML? Because we're able to build applications through Power Apps by simply adding in items on the screen and simply using point and click controls to style and manipulate and build out our applications. Well, the great thing about no code, low code is it's super easy to get started, but there's always gonna be a little bit of trade off. With this easy button of being able to customize, there is gonna be some rigidity in what you can customize. Take something as simple as this. Say I add in a rectangle control. Now, what if I want a pop-up menu, but instead of having these rigid corners, I might want a rounded corner effect. There's no easy way to really accomplish this with the out of the box controls and power apps. But one way we can do that is by going to insert text and adding in an HTML text control. This HTML control opens up a whole new world of styling capabilities in your power apps. So if you're looking for a way to take your design to the next level, the HTML control is a key part of that. But you need to know a little bit of HTML first. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. To understand what HTML is, we're going to go away from our no code, low code tool, and we're gonna open up a text editor. My favorite text editor is Visual Studio Code. It's free to install and it works on your Windows and your Mac devices like I'm on right now. But you can use any text editor of your choice. Now, if you're an acronym nerd like me and you wanna know what HTML stands for, it's Hypertext Markup Language. And like I said in the intro, it's the standard language for web pages. So let's start by creating a brand new HTML file in VS Code. So we're gonna to go to the File tab. We'll say New File. And then we'll immediately go back to File, do a Save As. I'll call this My Web Page. And the important thing here is to go to the Format dropdown and make sure you choose the HTML option so that we're creating a brand new HTML file. I'll also quickly change where I'm gonna save this in my documents folder there. And now we have our brand new HTML file. So the benefit of making sure that you start off creating it as an HTML file and doing that save is we're going to get what's called IntelliSense, which is a bunch of helper text inside of VS Code to help us build out our HTML. Now the important thing to know about HTML is it's organized by tags. And a tag is how HTML defines different areas and sections of the HTML document, which is what we have here. So that's how a web browser really reads and interprets what's on the page. To create these tags, we're gonna use our keyboard and type a less than sign. Now you see, as soon as I put in that less than sign, I get the IntelliSense. That's what this pop-up menu is. Everything that you're seeing here are different HTML tags. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of HTML tags. I am not gonna go through all of these in this video, just the fundamental ones that I think you need to know to get started. Now, these tags can be nested. So the very first tag that we wanna use when creating a new HTML file is the HTML tag. So I can select this from my list. And with tags, we want to open the tag with the less than sign, but we want to close it with the greater than sign. And you see, as soon as I type in that greater than sign, it added this other, what looks like tag for me. But the key difference you'll see here, if I kind of move that to another line, is this tag has a forward slash before the word HTML. So this is called a closing tag. So every tag, with the exception of a few, pretty much any tag that we're going to have items inside of needs to have an open, which is this, and a close, which is this with the forward slash before the name. So as I mentioned, we nest things inside of the tag. So we always wanna start with an HTML tag. And there are two main other tags which we're going to group the rest of the content for our HTML. The first one, if we do our less than symbol again, is called the head tag. 
So I see our IntelliSense suggesting the head tag. And instead of clicking it in your VS Code, I can also click Tab, and that will go ahead and add that onto the page for me. I'm going to do the same thing by typing in our greater than symbol, and that will build out my head tag. Now what we store here is basically what we call the metadata about your website. So a common piece of metadata would be your website title. So if I were to go and open my blog site, we see that it's called april.com slash SharePoint Siren. And that's the title that I have in the header tag of my website. So we have an HTML tag, a head tag, and now within the head tag, we can put in our title. So we can do another less than symbol, type in the word title, and now I can put in the title of my page here. I can simply just type in the text like my webpage. And now we have what is actually a working site. I won't have any content on it, but it will show a page with the title in the browser there. So let's actually save this as is, and I'll show you what this looks like. So here in my documents, there is our web page, so I can right click on that and I can say open with, and we can open it in any browser of our choice. So I'm using Edge, and as you see, there is our website. Now there's no content, but we do have the text my web page in there because we use that title tab. Now let's see how we get content to display on the page. To do that, we need a separate tag inside of our HTML. So it's gonna be outside of this head tag. We're gonna do another less than sign and the tag we want here is body. Now body is where all of your content is displayed. So when you pull up a website and you see content, that's all stored in the body. Now usually any page that you go to has some kind of title. So again, referencing my website, we see this is kind of the title of my blog here. And then this is some other content that I have. Now to do titles, there's several special tags called H1 through H6. So if I do my less than sign again and start typing H, we see we have all of these options, H1 through 6. So what these different header tags actually equate to is pretty much the same as what we have in Word, like heading 1 and heading 2. So you know how if I type in some text here and heading 1 might be big, but heading 2 is smaller. Same thing with heading three. That's the same thing that we're doing here in HTML. So H1 would be your biggest option, your biggest font size, all the way down to H6, which would be the smallest header font size. So if I want a header for my website, I might do say an H1, and then I can type in something like my super cool site. So let's do another save and refresh our page here. And now we're starting to see content on our site. So next thing we probably want on our page is maybe some paragraph text. So referencing my blog here, this is a header of the title of this blog, but the information you're seeing here is paragraph text below. So to add paragraph text, we're going to go stay inside of our body and we'll do our less than sign. And the tag for that is called the P tag. So we can put as much text as we want inside of this P tag and that will show as paragraph text. So I can say something like, welcome to my super cool new website that I'm building with HTML. And you'll see one of the things that the P tag does is it automatically puts in some spacing between the header and the content that we have here on the P tag. So we're starting to get a website up and going. So here's one paragraph. If I wanna have a different paragraph of text, I can simply go in and add another P tag and say something like, this is another paragraph. And we'll see it added that new line there. Now, what if I wanted to do something cool like have an image on the site? Well, of course we have an HTML tag for that. So we're gonna do our less than sign. And the tag we want is this IMG. Now before, remember how I said that almost all tags need to have an opening like this head tag and a closing? Well, the image tag is one of those exceptions because for an image, we're not going to put content inside the tag. We need to actually tell it what image are we wanting to display. So right after we type image there, we're gonna type another property called SRC. That's a shortcut for source. So we can say the image source equals and then you see that automatically gives us some double quotes, an open and a closed double quote. So this is expecting that we put the URL of the image here. So say I want this image on my site. What I can do is copy the image link. Of course, if we're going to be doing a real website, we wanna make sure we're giving 
credit to whatever images we're using. We might have an image on our server that we're using, but just for the sake of showing how this works, I'm gonna paste in inside these double quotes. Now, the other thing we need to do though, is if I leave this as is, it's going to show the image as we're seeing here. It's gonna take the height and the width of this image and that's how big it's going to display it on my web page. Now that might not be ideal. That's a pretty big image and I might want it to show slightly smaller. So we can add other properties here. I can do a property called height and then equals, and I can set either a percentage height or a pixel height. So if I want this to be 100 pixels, I can say 100 px for the height, and then the same thing for the width. I can simply type width equals, and then 100 pixels there. So that will ensure that it's going to shrink down the image to the size that I want. Now, finally, when we're working with images, we wanna make sure that all of the sites that we're building are accessible. So we wanna make sure we put in a alt tag. So a description of the image for screen readers. So we can type alt and do equals again, and then put in a description of this image. So the image tag is what we call a self-closing tag. So what we'll do to close out this image tag is do a forward slash, and then our greater than sign. And that's all we need. We don't have to go below the image tag and do like we did with the P tag here. So now when we go back to our site and refresh it, we see our image being displayed. All right, so just a few more HTML basics that I think you need to know to really get started. The next one is how to have hyperlinks in your HTML. So we're gonna do another less than sign. And to do a hyperlink, we're gonna use a tag called the A tag. The A tag is another tag similar to the image tag where we need to define specific properties. So we obviously need to tell this, since it's a hyperlink, where we want this to go. What web page should this go to? So you might think we need to type source like we did in the image, but it's actually different. The property we want here is called href. And the IntelliSense is really our friend here. It's making it super easy to build out this HTML. So now this is where we're gonna put the URL that we wanna go to. So I might want to link to my blog from our new website. So I'll copy that URL and I'll paste that in there. Now, the other thing we need for links though is the text that we want to show. So this right now is only telling the HTML where we should direct the user to go, but not what text to show. So we're going to do our greater than symbol here. And you see, as soon as I do that, it's doing the closing a tag for me. But to put in the text we wanna show, we're going to put that between the open and closing a tag. So I could say, check out April's blog. And now we refresh. There is our hyperlink and it took me right to my blog. Now you notice when I click on that link, it replaces the current tab I have open. So I don't see our new web page anymore and I went right to my blog. That might not be what you want. Maybe you want to do kind of like a open a new tab effect when you click links. Let me quickly show you a property that we can set on our A tags to be able to do that. So we define the href property, which is what tells it where to point you to. But another property we can do here is called target. Now, as we saw from the example, the default is to replace the current tab. And the target property for that is underscore self. But if we wanna make it open in a new tab, we can say target equals underscore blank. And now if we click that, it maintains our web page and opens that hyperlink in a new tab. Now the last thing that I wanna show you that I think is beneficial to know with HTML is how to do lists. So building a list in Word is easy. I can say my items, and then we can use this either bullets or numbering option. So let's just do the bullets, and I can type item one, item two, and that's an example of a list. So how do we recreate this same functionality inside of our HTML? Well, we can do a new tag here, and the one we want is UL. That stands for unordered list. Now within this UL tag, we need to define the different list items or bullet points. To do that, we need another tag called LI, list item. And then we can simply type our text. So we can say item one, and we can nest as many of these in our unordered list as we like. So we'll refresh again, and there is our unordered bullet point list of items. So it's really just that simple. In a matter of minutes here, we got the basics of HTML down and we have a working website, although maybe not the most styled and best looking one, but it's working and it has content out there very quickly. So taking this back full circle and how we can integrate this with our no-code, low-code solutions, 
what we can actually do is copy this HTML and we should be able to just paste it directly in our HTML text control in Power Apps in the HTML text property. And we wanna make sure we do wrap it in quotes like the example we're seeing here. And the only other thing to do, um, if you're seeing any error when you paste HTML inside of this control, is because of conflicting double quotes. Since we have to wrap the HTML itself in double quotes, anywhere in your HTML that you're using double quotes, like on our image tag here, you need to replace those with single quotes. So I'll just do it manually for now, but probably the easiest way when you know you wanna take some HTML you've written and put it in a Power App or whatever low code solution you're using is to do like a find and replace on the double quotes before you copy that and do it that way. But I'm just gonna go manually so you can see the process here and everywhere we have double quotes, we'll replace those with single, a tag, the target, and that should be it. So now we see our errors go away and we have our website content here in a Power App. So we just integrated HTML inside of our Power Apps Canvas app. Well, that's all that I have for you today in this video. The next video in the series will be on CSS, which really complements HTML. So that I'll take this video and show you how you can apply some styling to your HTML. Do me a favor, if you found this video helpful and you're liking this series, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And before you leave, check out some of my other videos that I have on Power Apps Design.